Black Ops 2 Buried Arguably one of the most iconic maps in Call of Duty Zombies from back in the game's golden age, you probably remember playing at least a few matches of this map back in the day, either camping on top of the bank or by a jug with your friends and using as many buildable traps as possible, or trying to complete the easter egg and figure out who on your team wasn't hitting that one target in the shooting gallery step. You also probably remember this map being easy, really easy, what with the infinite ammo paralyzer, the brand new Raygun Mark II with its headshot damage multiplier, and various camping spots around the map. So how did Buried become one of the most competitive maps on Black Ops 2 for the world record, with one of the most unbeatable records in all of Zombies? How did players fight their way past impossible escapes, game-breaking bugs, and mysterious script errors. In preparation for Buried's 10th anniversary this year, I'm going to take you through the last decade of world records on this map to show how the map and its place in Zombies has changed since the days of Black Ops 2. Buried is our new zombies map. This is something we've never done before. We've taken that little old west town and shoved it underground. Buried was released on July 2nd, 2013, as the third DLC for Black Ops 2. It introduced several new, never-before-seen elements into the game, including Leroy, the first ally NPC in Zombies, the Witches, the first special zombie type which were activated by an area as opposed to a round, a new burst fire variation of the ray gun, the Mark II, a save state tactical grenade in the time bomb, an infinite damage wonder weapon that gave new mobility tactics in the paralyzer, and a new buildable trap in the subsurface resonator. Furthermore, it was the first zombies map that seemed to heavily encourage camping as opposed to training the zombies in hordes and killing them. Players figured this out very quickly. As a day after the map came out, strategy guides were being uploaded featuring players sitting in the jug hallway and paralyzing the zombies to death. A few days later, players such as famous zombies duo Scotty i3 and Steve devised a strategy involving the subsurface resonator, a buildable automatic thundergun trap powered by the turbine buildable, in the jug hallway. With the paralyzer, they could easily fly up and replace resonators before the zombies made it close enough to trap them by jug. The only hard part was that after a certain amount of time, the turbine would start turning itself off and back on, or stuttering, indicating that it was losing power. But if players paid close enough attention, they could break the turbine and replace it before this happened. This strategy proved extremely effective as it was fast, low effort, and forgiving when it came to mistakes, but animation errors that occurred a few hours into games held players back from making it very far, at first. The first documented Round 100 on Buried was uploaded by Middle Eastern player KSA Smile on July 11th, a rather long nine days after the map was released. Unfortunately, the only existing gameplay is a clip of him on the round changeover, but we can assume he also used the Jug Hallway strategy, especially considering his points are relatively low, and the Resonator doesn't give points. In the first month of Buried's release, the Paralyzer could kill at any round with just a few seconds of shooting, which is why you can see KSA Smile vaporizing the last horde of 99. This would be beaten only a few days later on July 14th by Scotty I3, utilizing the strategy that he and his brother had popularized. Scotty managed to play flawless for 20 hours to round 124 before getting trapped by a zombie while trying to get a new resonator. And the game went pretty south when he tried to get Quick Revive back. But two days later, a player named Perk Bottled would show up to absolutely destroy this record, 
getting all the way to 158 before his Xbox froze after 35 hours of gameplay. It's unclear what exactly allowed these players to avoid the animation error for so long, but post-release hotfixes and less use of the paralyzer animations could definitely have played a role. Perkbottled's intimidating record would last until the end of the month, for one, because it was beaten, but also because the map was majorly patched. Around August 1st, a YouTuber named The Zombie Project would start a game that would eventually reach round 162. However, he played this game on local mode, meaning that his Xbox didn't immediately update when the map received a game-changing patch on August 1st. With the patch, the Paralyzer was greatly nerfed, turning it from an infinitely killing weapon to having a steep damage drop-off by round 70. Uh, we tested it out, and at round 70, it was one and a half full petrifiers to kill one zombie. Um, uh, we did it again at round 80, it was three and a half full petrifiers to do it. 87, it was 12. At 92, we did it 21 times, and the zombie just respawned. Now players had to fully rely on the buildable traps to kill zombies in the high rounds. This rendered all high round games played before August 1st obsolete, and the leaderboards were completely wiped. The community had to start the records from round 1 again. At the same time, the PS3 and PC versions of the DLC were released, so PS3 players took a crack at the record instead. On August 2nd, a French player named WLR51 Sang would reach round 115, becoming the first post-patch game to reach the iconic Zombies round. He died after trying to narrowly escape the jug hallway when his buildables broke. A week later, on August 9th, this record would be beaten back on Xbox by Intuit Scott, who reached round 152, and again two days later by Simstep, who reached round 155, nearly bringing the record all the way back up to what it had been before the patch. Scott's game ended in a new error. The animation error so common in the first week or so had been fixed by Treyarch, but this script error had shown up in its place. This error would become much more common and important than anyone could have realized at the time, but not till years later. Scott played the safest way possible with the turbine built in the saloon, as opposed to where most players built it in the courthouse. This was due to the saloon being a much more open and trainable area, whereas the courthouse was cramped, the workbench was in an awkward place, and respawning zombies could quickly trap and down a player. However, getting turbines back from the saloon was a much slower process, as you would have to run across the entire map. Simstep played the same meta strategy, but quit on 155 out of boredom once he had the record. And this was a pretty good indicator of how buried high rounds were regarded at the time, and why the series of records would grind to a screeching halt. Simstep's world record would stand through the end of August, through the end of 2013, all the way through 2014, into 2015 before it would even be challenged. Why? Because Buried was... boring. The strategy was boring. It wasn't fun to play, it wasn't engaging. A good amount of the community thought it was so easy and exploitative of the map elements that it should be considered a glitch. But it was by far the best strategy on the map, and it was the strategy that all the previous records had been played with so trying anything else wasn't really worth it. Am I a big fan of what Treyarch did with this map? No, I'm not really a big fan. I kind of wish they went into a different direction, more like Black Ops 1 uh, style maps, uh, where there was multiple strategies you could use on the maps. Even two years later after playing that map, we were still finding strategies, but on Black Ops 2, we are limited to the strategies we can use to get to high rounds. And with more exciting maps like Mob of the Dead and Origins book-ending Buried's release, Buried would become a ghost town for nearly two years. On April 25th, 2015, an Australian player named Zex Spoonie would play a game on PC that would finally pass Simstep's record. 
However, when Spoonie reached around 159, he discovered something very strange. The resonator wasn't working. All of a sudden, it no longer killed the zombies. They just ran right through it. So, although Spoonie had used the classic jug hallway strategy all the way to world record, he had to leave on 159 to avoid getting overrun. Why did this happen? Well, the PC port of Black Ops 2, available on Steam, was horribly unoptimized. Not only did it not have a local mode for players to play on to avoid getting disconnected if their internet dropped or Steam servers reset, but the trap damage was coded differently on PC. And starting on round 159, the zombie's health was higher than the damage the traps did. Therefore, past this round on PC, players literally had no way to kill the zombies. Spoonie tried to use an alternate last minute strategy with the trample steam, another buildable trap in the courthouse, but this only caused the zombies to behave even more strangely, ragdolling infinitely without actually being killed, and he died not far into the round. It's worth noting that, since Simstep's record, a small change had been made to the strategy. While most players had used the time bomb in their tactical grenade slot in 2013, now players had mostly transitioned to using monkey bombs instead. While this might not seem like a huge optimization, it was much more efficient. While time bombs could whisk a player out of being trapped almost instantly, using them slowed down gameplay a lot as the player would have to replay whatever chunk of the game they had just reverted by going back in time. Plus, the player would have to recycle the time bomb and get a new one every few rounds. Monkey bombs were less reliable and had to be used proactively, but the time and headache they saved made games faster and made not downing and playing well more critical. Additionally, it was later discovered that using the time bomb too many times in a game will give you an error anyway. Meanwhile, back on Xbox, a new buried player was quietly rising through the ranks, sneaking up on the record. By the time Spoonie achieved the record, a relatively unknown player named Cyberdyne Gaming already had a 125 death and a 146 disconnect to his name, and he wasn't going to stop there. On May 16th, 2015, less than a month after Spoonie reached the limit of the record on PC, Cyber would achieve round 173 on console. His game ended in a death after his turbine stuttered and multiple monkey bombs failed on him. But through his experience on the map, Cyber had learned a crucial lesson about buried high rounds. Buried was a test of endurance. One small mistake of not being prepared for the turbine or resonator to break could result in a game ending double down at any point. Armed with this information and the skill honed from his past games, Cyber set out to beat his own record. A month later, on June 13th, he did, pushing the record another 10 rounds to 183. Standing 24 rounds above the next highest player, this was the biggest push by a single player since the map's release. This time, the game ended in a freeze instead of a down. While a 200 was in sight for the first time in the map's history, Buried's players were catching up to the map's coding limitations, even on console. While Cyber had perfected his attentiveness and reaction skills on the map, he was unknowingly starting a new era for Buried, the Error Era. Cyber would now reign over Buried for even longer than Simstep had, but not necessarily for lack of attempts. In November 2016, a player named Quaz the Gamer would play all the way to 182 before erroring just one round before the record. No! 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 Are you f***ing kidding me? Are you f***ing kidding? Are you f***ing kidding? One round from the world record! I get a f***ing script error! Buried was gatekeeping itself. Sometime in December 2016, Cyber would beat his own record again, achieving round 186 in a game that lasted about 55 to 60 hours, with the same strategy and the same result, another freeze. Unfortunately, no footage still exists of this game. Cyber didn't save it, intending to beat himself again, but never managed to climb above these long-standing games. 
Instead, two new players would come along out of nowhere and change the landscape of buried high rounds forever by dueling for the greatest buried milestone ever achieved, the first 200. The first of those players was me. In March of 2017, I would start up a round 115 attempt on my favorite map. I liked Buried because it was excitingly easy, and the aesthetic of the map was unique. I had studied this strategy from players like Cyber and Quaz, and speedrunners like Twitcha, where I learned a faster way to play the early rounds that previous world record holders hadn't, that is, camping in the Speed Cola Tunnel, where there were only two spawns. I picked it up pretty quickly, making it all the way past my goal flawlessly to 116. However, this is where things took a turn for the worst. I accidentally hit my knife button while trying to fly up to grab a resonator, and the horde took this opportunity to instantly down me. Losing meal kick took my paralyzer, leaving me trapped in the jug hallway by one zombie, where I accepted my fate and floated off to that big jug hallway in the sky. Dissatisfied with this ending, and knowing I could make it farther, I would quickly restart the next day for a game that would make it much farther than I could have imagined. Despite taking three downs before 115 this game, my stream encouraged me to continue, and I made it past 120, past 150, past 180. The world record was getting closer and closer. Finally, on April 2nd, 2017, I tied and then beat the world record. Cyber had finally been dethroned. This was obviously a very exciting experience, so I jumped around the jug hallway, not paying attention to when my resonator broke. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! The game had gone from 100 to 0 very quickly, but I still had the record at 187. However, my soon-to-be arch-nemesis was not going to let me keep it for long. One month later, Killer Chaz, a British player who already had experience playing for speedrun and co-op records on Buried, set his eyes on my record. He would start up a game with a classic strategy with one small change that had not been implemented since the days of pre-patch buried. He built the turbine in the courthouse instead of the saloon, going for speed and efficiency over safety. This would pay off as Chaz was nearly five hours faster than my game. Chaz would end up pushing the record up by one round before script erroring on 188. Of course, I wasn't gonna let that stand. Throughout the remainder of May 2017, I restarted over and over, revising my own strategy to have the turbine in the courthouse, and teaching myself how to be more efficient with replacing my buildables. I racked up several failed attempts past 100 over the course of the month. While this was definitely demotivating, eventually I got a game that closed in on the world record, despite encountering some of the most unfair downs ever on Buried in my opinion. On June 2nd, I would shoot past Chaz's 188, pushing all the way to 195 before finally erroring after 50 hours of game time. There it is! Yo! That's it, boys! I was actually happy to error because I finally felt like I'd gotten good enough to the point where only the map could hold me back. I hadn't died from fat fingering buttons or celebrating too early. At the time I considered this the greatest game of zombies that I personally had ever played. What was more, it seemed that the greatest milestone in the history of Buried was right around the corner, the first 200. 
Round 200 was viewed as a massive accomplishment in Black Ops 1 and 2 zombies at this time, a sort of numerical difference between the good players and the great players. And at this point, the only map that had a round 200 on all of Black Ops 2 was Mob of the Dead. Finally, we would be able to bring Buried up to that level, four years after the map had come out. Hot with the 200 fever, I would start another attempt later that summer to beat my own record and achieve what no Buried player had done before. Now that all the major Buried players of the time, me, Chaz, Quaz, and Cyber, the four horsemen of Buried as I called us, now that we all had a game that had ended in error, we realized we needed to start theorizing ways to avoid the error, or at least push it back long enough for one of us to achieve round 200. But on console, modding and testing was extremely limited, so really we could only guess and run trial and error in full games as to what was causing the game to crash at around the same point for each of us. We didn't think it was necessarily based on time, as our times varied widely, which pointed more to something we were doing over the course of the game and the strategy. The main theory was that shooting the paralyzer too much at the zombies was causing some kind of script overflow, and so players had been trying to limit their usage of this wonder weapon to slow the zombies. This was theorized because players usually erred while holding the zombies back while they broke the turbine. Another theory was that the witches spawning caused some kind of lingering variable that eventually crashed the game. So, what did we do? In early August of 2017, Chaz would start a game operating on these theories, and I would start a game just days after him to prepare to defend my record. Our plan was to use the Paralyzer as little as possible, and we would leave the witch's house closed for the entire game. This meant that neither of us could get stamina up or pack-a-punch, and we would be limited to three downs, as we wouldn't be able to get free perks from the witches. As the two most accomplished players on the map, we decided that if the theory worked, we would try to hit 200 at the same time, so that we could both say we had the first 200 on Buried. We managed to play even faster than before with new strategy optimizations, such as leaving the turbine with the zombies as soon as they latched on to break it, rather than staying with them until they broke it. The games went beautifully until the 190s. Then, they would suddenly end in tragedy. Same thing that happened from my 154 down, but it was like, uh, like I started the round with a resonator that had... <gasps> I <laughs> Chaz would choke on 192 in the courthouse, and while I would succeed at beating my own record, I would error the very next round on 196. Ten minutes in to a 40 minute round. Yo! What the hell, man? Come on! Yo! Oh my god! <laughs> that sucks so bad! Well, actually, it doesn't suck because I got the record again. But I already had the fucking record. Oh my god, dude. I hardly even paralyzed them for a second. Our theories had proven almost completely useless. Disappointed and burnt out from grinding 8 to 10 hour days on Buried over and over, the drive that had come so close to pushing Buried to the 200 would fizzle out for the remainder of the year. It didn't help when, in January of 2018, Chaz would play a game flawlessly to 194, only to air two rounds before the record. Oh no, I just f***ing errored! The four horsemen of Buried were demotivated and out of answers, and the chances of achieving 200 anytime soon seemed to be getting smaller and smaller. What we needed was a major breakthrough. Buried lay dormant until the summer rolled back around, except for a half-hearted attempt here and there. On May 30th, 2018, a new player named Hayes Electro, who was really only playing Buried for fun, would tie the record at 196, also erroring. 
This strong game would revitalize attempts for the record. Plus, Chaz had been sitting on another theory for prolonging the error, that instead of being based on paralyzer usage, the error was based on the number of buildables the player used over the course of the game. Eventually, in August of 2018, exactly one year after the first time we'd raced to 200 with an error theory, we would both start up games at the same time once again, and these games would change Buried forever. If Chaz's theory was correct, then to use less buildables at a time, we would simply have to use more resonators before replacing the turbine each time. This was the first implementation of what is now known as stretching turbines. Instead of replacing the turbine after the normal amount of 5 resonators, when the turbine would begin to stutter, we played long chunks of rounds where we would use 6 resonators per turbine. This was a more dangerous strategy, as there were long periods of time where the turbine would be shut off, and players would have to stall the zombies. This gave the zombies much more opportunity to swarm the player, or for them to get behind the resonator while it wasn't blasting, but it was also more engaging because players had to pay even more attention. As two of the most experienced players on the map, with literally hundreds of hours of high round experience each, there was hardly anyone better than Chaz and I to put this into practice. The two of us kept pace with each other, renewing our year old plan to hit 200 at the exact same time. Despite varying between 5 to 6 resonators per turbine on this new version of the strategy, this game became my highest flawless round ever, as I didn't take my first down until 161. Both of us were playing incredibly well, and as we both passed 196, there was major hope that this was the answer for the 200. Surely nothing would go wrong in those last 4 rounds. The first player out was me. On round 198, less than an hour away from my goal, I erred again. Chaz had fallen behind due to his personal life during the week, so while this was record, it would only last two days before he would catch up. He hit 198, then 199, and then the impossible happened. The hairs. <laughs> we're, literally, we're literally seconds away. This is it. We made it. We made it. We made it. All right, my spam's ready. Fucking yes. Oh, it feels so good. Hey. <laughs> we beat it. We did it. We did it. <laughs> we beat baby. Oh god. Five years and one month after Buried's release, the first 200 ever had finally been achieved. And Killer Chaz was the one who had made it happen. See, Chaz had stretched six resonators per turbine for the entire game up until 190, and this had pushed back the error just enough for him to secure the 200. He went on to error on 201 solidifying his game as the best game of Buried played so far. The quest for 200 was finally over. For the first time, players had made concrete progress on figuring out the error. So what did I do? I restarted, of course. Now I was playing not only for my own 200, owing it to myself after so many attempts, but I had to play even more efficiently than Chaz had. So I decided to use 7 resonators per turbine instead of 6. After 7, each turbine would become extremely inefficient, so it seemed like the perfect number. Still, I was worried something would go wrong and the error would cut me down yet again. After fighting through several failed attempts, October 2018 would see me finally get a game going. And this game went beautifully. My times were faster, my downs were less, and I was playing out of my mind doing 7 resonators every single turbine. And it worked. There's no audio of it because my mic was off at the time, but I literally screamed when I got 200. I think that's a pretty valid reaction. I nearly ended up dying on 201, but my down recovery was on point, and on October 12th, 2018, I hit round 202. 
Then I went to go play Black Ops 4 Zombies, because that happened to be the same day that it came out. This gave me some time to step back and think about how I should continue the game. I was afraid that I was about to err if I used any more resonators, so I decided to switch my strategy up to using a rather unoptimized trample steam route. I played this for about 30 minutes into 202, before my Xbox decided that it didn't like massive amounts of paralyzed zombie bodies ragdolling on the screen from the trample steam, and froze. In hindsight, I think I had at least a couple more rounds in this game and could have potentially gotten 210 plus. But at the time, despite our new discovery of stretch turbines, it was still very murky as to how many extra rounds this gave you. I still consider this my favorite buried game I've ever played, and probably my best too. And it was a record that would not soon be beaten. At this point, the end of 2018, the monster that was buried had been defeated. Chaz and I could finally take a breather. Now that 200 had been accomplished, and the map's two top players had just managed to scrape by before erroring. Buried was virtually seen as being maxed out, and it probably would have stayed that way for a while, had not the entire scene of Black Ops 2 Zombies changed in 2019. At this point, Black Ops 2 Zombies was experiencing a gradual shift from console to a version of the game on PC called Redacted. Redacted was an offline mod for BO2 that had come out several years earlier, but was only just now gaining popularity with the high round players. Not only could players finally play on PC without fear of getting disconnected mid-game, but Redacted also gave players the ability to put patches in the game, meaning that they could fix the round 159 trap issue that had stopped Spoonie's game years earlier and bring PC back up to the same level as console. World records such as Stealth McFilthy's 228 on Mob on Redacted in December of 2018 forced players to decide whether this PC mod should be considered for the official leaderboards. Pretty soon, Buried Games would start being played on Redacted, which revealed something completely unexpected about the map. On July 14th, 2019, an Austrian player named Kajaya would one-up my record on PC, reaching round 203 before his game crashed while paused overnight. The strange thing about this game? Kajaya had done 5 resonators per turbine the entire time, the same amount that had stopped Chaz and I in the 190s on console. And Kajaya hadn't even finished his game properly, it had crashed due to totally unrelated reasons. Something strange was going on, and it didn't stop there. A month later, Italian Black Ops 3 player O Jumpy would also try his luck on the redacted version of the map. On August 18th, 2019, he would start up a laid back 5 resonator game just like Kajaya. What he probably didn't know was that his game would show the real difference between PC and console buried. Despite the fact that he was only doing 5 resonators per turbine, Jumpy skyrocketed past the record all the way to round 220 before he finally erred. Not only that, but he did it flawlessly, faster than any other buried game played before, and he didn't even have to throw a single monkey bomb. This game threw buried into chaos and controversy. It was now clear that console buried and PC buried were nowhere even close to being on the same playing field. While at first it was believed that the error didn't even exist on PC, now it seemed that it did exist, but hardware differences between console and PC made it happen much later. Jumpy's record was simply impossible to beat on console, and it wasn't the only one. With more players migrating to Redacted, differences on other maps were found that pointed more and more toward PC being vastly better than console to play on. On Xbox, Mob of the Dead experienced a series of unexplainable game-ending errors called Hunk Errors that simply didn't exist on PC. Plus, Field of View and FPS were much more dynamic on PC, allowing players to play better. Not only this, but perma perks were also readily available, whereas on console you had to be online and risk disconnection to play with perma perks. Some of these were particularly helpful for buried high rounds. The PhD perma perk, 
which gave the player the ability to kill zombies in the early game by dolphin diving, the jug perma perk, which let the player take extra hits, and the tombstone perma perk, which gave back every perk except quick revive instantly after a player downed. Not to mention PC had the ability to use custom textures. With all these unfair advantages, the community began to consider splitting the leaderboards between console and PC. However, even this idea was controversial. After all, Black Ops 1 maps were virtually all played exclusively on PC at this point, due to the significant advantages of no frame lag and less errors, and those players hadn't split their boards. So, despite all the confusion, guess who would start up another game a year after his last to pick up the pieces? Was it A. Wonderful, B. Wonderful, or C. All of the above? That's right, on January 7th, 2020, at the start of the new year, I would set out to see how far you could get on PC with the same strat I had used to one-up Chaz's record on console, 7 resonators per turbine. I figured that, even if the boards were going to be split between PC and console, I should go for the record on PC so there really would be no debate as to who was the king of buried. Despite the fact that all I had to play on was a gaming laptop, and I had performance issues throughout the game, sometimes very intense performance issues, I managed to become the first person to have two 200s on buried, pass Jumpy's record, and make it farther than I think most people predicted. Since my 202 had been cut short by a freeze, there really was no telling how far I would go on 7 res, and as the rounds stretched on, a whole new goal came to mind, one even more impressive than the first 200. What if round 255 was possible on Buried? 255 is the max round that is even possible on Black Ops 2 and 3. Because of how the game is coded, the round number doesn't even go up after that. And while it had been reached hundreds of times on BO3, and become a staple of that game, it had never been reached on BO2. In fact, it wouldn't even be possible on any map other than Buried. However, 255 wouldn't be achieved so easily. As I wondered whether I would ever error in the 220s, the game eventually answered that question for me on round 233. Oh no, error, error, it froze, it froze, it froze. And I am being completely honest and humble when I say that this record would become one of the most unbeatable in Black Ops 2's history. My 233 would remain uncontested for the rest of 2020. But at the end of the year, some of my greatest competition would be on the rise, two French players named Blasters and Thysa. Blasters was an up-and-coming player who had just started going for records in 2020, and already had a lot accomplished, including the Nuketown co-op record of 90, and around 210 on Buried No Power using only the Trample Steam. Thysa had been playing Buried for years, but was now inspired to go for the record. But at this point, the problem facing players was that a new strategy needed to be invented to avoid the error for longer than I had. I had used the only solution we knew about, stretching turbines, so Blasters and Thysa tried to optimize their playstyle more than me. It was time for more trial and error, and none of these went as expected. In May 2021, Thysa played a game with 9 resonators per turbine instead of 7 to round 223, and errored. The turbine will last up to 9 to 10 resonators, but after 7 it will only blast once and then turn off for longer, making it even more dangerous for the player than normal stretching. In theory, this should have given Thysa a lot more rounds, but he erred 10 rounds earlier. Fast forward to August 2021, and Blasters would make it all the way to 232, two minutes from tying the record, before erroring with the same strategy of 9 to 10 res. In October, Thysa would err on 226, and again on 231. Thysa's 231 employed a new strategy he had invented to get Quick Revive guaranteed from the witches every time after a down. This was done by throwing down a time bomb before killing the witch, taking the perk, and if it wasn't quick revive, reversing time, recycling the time bomb, and trying again. However, too many time bomb uses could have caused his error here, because the error message pointed to a file called zm underscore equipment. 
FISA aired again on 222 in December. No matter how many Resonators players stretched, or whether they used the Mark II only until 70 plus, no one could touch my 233. It was time to try something new. For a while, a theory had been floating around that because the error was probably limited to how many turbines a player used over the course of the game, using the trample steam for part of the game would give players enough leeway to beat the record. However, it was very difficult to find a strategy that was fast, safe, and used the trample steam in the saloon, since the other two workbenches were occupied and the church workbench had horrible spawns. After a lot of strat testing, a strategy was finally found that met all the criteria, called fittingly Saloon Trample. In February of 2022, Blasters played this strategy to round 160, an incredible feat considering the strategy was so new. 160 was the estimated round that you would have to use the Trample Steam to, to avoid the air until 255 but also to reach 255 before hitting Buried's predicted reset time of 115 hours. Blasters then moved to the Jug Hallway and played the rest of his game flawlessly, only to error on 220. His error message indicated that the error was because of Vulture Aid, Buried's unique perk, but Blasters had never actually used Vulture Aid in his game. He had only gotten it when using Time Bombs to force Quick Revive. This determined that even if you got Vulture Aid just once, whatever caused Vulture to error stayed in the game regardless of whether you got rid of the perk or not. In my 233, I had gotten lucky enough to never get Vulture, which meant that from now on, players would be taking a huge risk picking up any extra perks from the witches. But despite these setbacks across the board, neither player would give up. After failing on 220 plus five times, on March 6, 2022, Thysa would finally combine enough theories and get lucky enough to achieve 233, before erroring on the same round. He had switched between Trample Steam and Resonator until 100, and done 9 to 10 Resonators the rest of the game, yet still got the same result as I did. Even so, my record had finally been matched after two years and one month, making it the longest untouched record in Buried history. This was also the first time Buried had ever had a joint record, and this was even more interesting considering how differently Thysa and I had played. After this, the dust would settle on Buried for a while. In May, Thysa would play a no perk game to 221 in which he, you guessed it, also erred, but this game made no progress on error knowledge, save for the fact that Thysa was the first person to error while using the Trample Steam in this run. But in September 2022, a run would be played that would bring everyone back to Buried. On September 23rd, a Spanish player named Okla would achieve round 234 on Buried. However, this game was extremely controversial. To understand why, let me explain another technical nuance of zombies. On every COD Zombies map before Black Ops 4, after being on for 25 days, the game will crash in most cases, and in the best scenario, the game will black screen for another 25 days before continuing. Long story short, this is because the game hits the max amount of milliseconds it can be running, and overflows into the negatives. Oakley used an external program called Cheat Engine to freeze the game while he was paused, so this would never happen. Using modding programs like this is generally frowned upon for world record runs because of the sheer amount of gameplay elements you can change with them. So although Okla played a fantastic game in full, using Trample Steam after 230 until his death on 234, his game is not considered by most as the record. I'm sorry Okla. However, Thysa and Blasters quickly set out to eliminate the controversy by beating Okla's game anyway. Blasters, who was already in a game at the time, would play the same way to 229, only to have his game end to a power outage on September 28th. Thysa would attempt again a month later, with the same intention of switching to Trample Steam on 230, but he erred on 230, right before he was going to switch. With Thysa burnt out on attempts, and with him having the joint record anyway, it was up to Blasters to beat the unbeatable record. 
Blasters had racked up a considerable amount of records across BO2 at this point, including Bus Depot and Die Rise Solo, and Farm, Transit, and Town Co-op. In the beginning of 2023, he would set his eyes back on Buried, and by January 11th, he would play one of the best Buried games ever. Not only did he only take one down this game on 232, he was three hours faster to 233 than Thysa, and six hours faster than me. But unbelievably, he would also err on 233, even though he had been doing Saloon Trample for eight rounds. Buried is now a three-way tie, which hasn't happened with a BO1 or 2 solo zombie record since 2018 with Darice. And this is where Buried remains. Despite the multitude of theories and the progress in figuring out the side errors such as Vulturade, the true cause of the Buried error is still a mystery. So where do we go from here? Well, research and testing hasn't stopped on the Buried error. Players like Issues, who had a major part in figuring out the cause of the Die Rise Elevator error, have been testing new strats in Saloon with the couch open, as the only difference between Okla's game and Thyssen Blaster's games is that Okla had the couch open, and Okla didn't err. So what round is theoretically possible on Buried? That's a pretty impossible question, but with current knowledge, apparently 233. While the error does seem to hinge somewhat on luck, we need a breakthrough new strategy to beat it by a significant amount. We've found ways to prolong it before, which would indicate that there are more ways to prolong it that we just haven't found yet. Sure, this is frustrating, but the interesting aspect of the error is that it forces the player to attempt and master new and often much weirder and more difficult strategies in order to avoid the error such as Saloon Strat, Saloon Trample, Power Trample, No Power, French Revolution Strat, Survival Mapping, B23R Strat, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 Res, Switching Perks and Areas, Playing Fast and Playing Slow, My Personal Strong Suit. If there was no error, players would just be able to play 5 Res until 255, which would make Buried really no different than a map like Revelations or Black Ops 3 Ascension. For this reason, while the Jug Hallway strategy is still the meta, Buried has some of the most strat variation on any map in recent years, and has become a much more competitive map than it was at the beginning of its life. So, while it's clear that Buried is playing the long game, there's hope. Buried is one of the very few Zombies maps where the record is uniquely not based on how fast you play. Most BO1 and BO2 maps are so optimized in 2023 that it would take years for a new player to train their skills enough and get lucky enough to beat the record. But Buried's skill floor is comparatively low and its record may only be held back by cleverness. Many of the players in this video only started playing because it was their favorite map and most started learning it years after the map came out. The map, it seems, has only gotten more popular for high rounds as the years have gone on. And this brings me to my final point, that this video is my own tribute to Buried. Had I quit on 115 that day in 2017, had I not kept reattempting, had I not gotten hooked on defending my record on the map, this YouTube channel would not look like this and you would be watching a completely different video. Playing and brainstorming the map was how I met some of my best friends, and a lot of the people from the community I still talk to today. I don't play Buried as much these days, and the days of sitting like a goblin on my bed and racing through hours and hours a day are long gone. But how can I leave that underground town behind? So let me backtrack and answer one of the questions I get asked the most often. What round is possible on Buried? My response to that has varied a lot over the years, but look at it like this. The record has been going up for 10 years. How could 255 not be possible, even if it takes years more? It's fair game for anyone, even you watching this video. That's why I've included a range of resources about the map in the description, including my tutorial on how to play the map for high rounds, my very detailed accurate leaderboards, and more information on the history of these records, which I want to give a huge thanks to Becca for helping me define and put together. So now that we've looked back, it's time to look forward. Buried is waiting to be maxed out. 
I'm Wonderful, and this has been the complete world record history of Buried. Thanks for watching. Thank you.